Hello, welcome back to part two of our fog material tutorial. We're going to be setting up those switches and other items that I mentioned in the previous one. So if you haven't done part one, go do it now. That describes how we're making the material we currently see affecting the scene here. In this one, we're going to be continuing working on from that. So the first thing is we're going to look at these vector lengths. Now you see we have this vector two and vector three. Currently we're using the vector 3, which as mentioned, as I move away from that sphere, it gets covered up by the fog. If we were to use a vector 2 on the other hand, no matter how far I go above that sphere, it's going to remain unfogged. And that's because we're using just the X and Y components, not the X, Y and Z. So we're going to want to switch so we can actually turn this on and off, or so we can make it different in different instances. So first we're going to right click and we're going to look for switch. Now there's quite a few of them, but we want parameters, static switch parameter. And we're going to call this B use 2D vector. Okay. So we're going to plug V2 length into true and V3 length into false and this node here we're going to connect into the top of our divide making sure we've connected this subtract one into both inputs here now this means that when true we will be using the 2d vector length so that as mentioned it gets the fog isn't affected by the z-axis but if it's false it is so that's one switch done Another switch I had was to use the scene depth. Now the scene depth can help increase performance in some areas where you might not want the world positions being done for vectors. Or you might just want to see the difference. So I mainly used the scene depth to be just around the player. So it was for the area where we don't really want to be doing a lot of distance work, we just want to be making sure if the player is near the edge or not. So first off, we're going to right click and we're going to type scene depth and we're going to get the scene depth from depth. Next, I'm going to use another switch, static switch parameter. I'm going to call it BU scene depth on true. We're also going to want the texture coordinate. On true, we're going to use this to divide by the start distance. On false, we're going to use whatever is input here. By default, I'm using BU scene depth as false. And same with the 2D vector. If you wanted to keep them true as default, which is Sometimes the preferred method, you can just call it something like B use vector and put the vector in true and the depth in false. So I might show you an example of that. I'll use B use vector uh, B use vector depth. On true, we use this vector output. On false we use the scene depth output. So just making sure your naming schemes make sense to the values. I'm going to keep it as BU scene depth and keep both of these to false by default. Okay, now we've actually finished our material setup now. So we can have this fog tutorial, which by default is not using the scene depth and is not using 2D vectors, but you might want to create one material instance, fog tut 2D, where we just go in and we'll click B use 2D vector to true. We'll slide this on over to our post processing volume. In post process material array, we want to choose asset reference and we'll add fog tut 2D. And now if I just go up, you'll see that 
particular area never gives in to the fog. But then if I wanted to swap it for just the normal fog tutorial, the map is now covered in fog. So I hope you enjoyed the part two and now understand what switches are in materials. They're really useful. I recommend using them when you can if you need some sort of logic check or ability to differentiate things between different material instances. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.